video is a brief introduction to the options available for a standard ESS user. So right now you're currently viewing the ESS login page. So once your ITC has completed your conversion from kiosk, you will be given your district's ESS URL address to log into your district's ESS instance. Your kiosk username will convert over and become your ESS username. However, a new password must be set. You should receive an email from the address registered in Legacy Kiosk. That will provide a link to allow you to set an initial password. So if you don't reset the password prior to the temporary password expiring, you can use the forgot password link on this page to manually generate a new password reset email to you. You will follow the steps in the email to reset your password to something permanent. So once you have your password set, you're ready to go, you log in, you will see the ESS menu displayed off to the left and it's based on the role or roles you have been given. So just to note, your existing kiosk roles will convert to ESS. So in order to find out what role you have been given, you can scroll down to the bottom and click on your name, the dropdown, and click on the profile option. So your roles will be displayed here. So for Susan, she has the standard user role. While in here, you have the option to set a default start and stop time. They're right here. You can use the drop downs. And by setting these, um, when you create your new leave request, it will autofill the start and ending leave time on that leave request with what is listed in your profile. So if you had um, start and ending leave time setting kiosk, those will convert over to ESS as well. For the rest of the options available under the profile, you can refer to our home chapter in the ESS user manual for more details. So as a standard user, based on what has been configured district-wide in ESS, you may see the following options over here to the left. So if, for example, your district doesn't use the leave request utility um, in ESS, you will not see the leave request or the My Leave Calendar options. If you don't create timesheets in ESS, you will not see the timesheet option, which would be displayed here. So when I click on the Home option here, um, if configured, the announcement board will display any announcements the district has created in ESS. So you can click on the announcement to read the full details. If any custom links were created uh, for your district, um, you will see those custom links here. And obviously you just click on the link and it will take you to that website. The employee profile pulls your biographical information directly from USPS. The details are broken into separate tabs for easier viewing. See them right here. If any personal information displayed is incorrect, you can click on the Create New Data Change request over here to show you what that does. And what happens then, um, it will change the screen, allowing you to edit anything um, that is shaded gray. So once you've completed your changes, you're going to click on the Submit Data Change Request, and the change request will be forwarded to a staff member who uh, is able to approve or reject the requested changes, and then those approved requests will be posted to USPS. So if you need to go in and change um, your marital status, um, you can go in and click on that, and then obviously once approved, uh, the changes will be sent to USPS. In the position details, um, this provides a brief view of your contract information. And this again is directly pulled from USPS. If you have multiple positions, I'm going to 
condense this option here. If you have multiple positions, the job number and position will be displayed. You just click on the arrow to view the details about that position. Again, the employee profile and the position details, as well as the um, view print and W-2 and leave information are all view type of screens. Next, if your district is configured to view payslips pay slips and W-2s, those two options will be displayed. So it just depends on what your district has set up. Um, again, the stored information is pulled from USPS. So in each of these options, in either the payslip or the W-2, you will be able to directly download the payslip or W-2 in PDF format using this option, or you can open it up to view it in PDF format. And with the payslips as well, you have the ability to query by a payslip or a payslip date or by the check number. I don't have any W-2s to show you, um, but if I did, they'd be displayed here as well with those same options to either download it or view it in PDF. The leave information displays your accumulated and used leave for each available leave type. And this again is being pulled directly from USPS. So I just wanna stress that the balances in here do not include ESS leave requests that have not been posted to USPS. So that would include any initiated, approved, and even exported leave won't be counted until that exported leave is posted into USPS. So you'll see three uh, tabs up at the top. The leave balances is a summarized grid of your available USPS leave types and their current balances. The absences includes detailed activity on your absences that have been recorded in USPS. So this is a great way to view your absences that you have taken in the past. Use the filter row at the top to filter by past activity date or by the type, such as sick leave. Accumulations includes detailed activity on your earned or accumulated leave from USPS. Again, you can filter but at the top of the screen using the filter row. Next, I'm going to take you to your leave requests. So this, the options located under your leave requests um, may vary depending on the roles you have. For a standard user, you will have the option to create a leave request or view your submitted leave request. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create leave request. And this is where you're going to be entering in your leave request. So your active positions will be displayed by default. So I have two. So if I have more than one, I could click on the position that I need to create the leave request for. And then I can either use uh, the tab or my mouse to advance to each field in my leave request. So if I go over to leave request and select, let's say sick leave, it will display um, my current balances um, Including, including any ongoing leave. So ongoing leave is your initiated and approved leave in ESS. So right now, including ongoing leave requests, I have 45, um, either depending on if you're using days or hours, we're using days for this district, I have 45 days um, of a leave balance. So depending on the leave type you, you enter to, whether it's sick, professional, you may see additional prompts on your leave request, depending on if the district set it up that way. So for this district, when they select sick leave type, they do require a leave type subcategory. So this populated once I selected sick. So from here then, I can go down here and select a specific leave type. Um, if I went back and selected maybe professional leave, um, what's going to happen is that subcategory uh, was removed, but underneath here, this leave expenses information has been uh, displayed. And so this allows you then to enter any estimated expense information for your professional leave request. 
I'm going to go back and change it back to sick leave. And let's say I put in for a medical appointment. So um, a reason, um, if a reason is required, you will need to enter that. So I'm just going to put in dentist. And then I'm going to enter in my starting and ending leave times. So again, if you enter that information underneath your profile down here, it will auto-populate your start and ending leave times with what was entered in your user profile. Um, but obviously, you can overwrite any of that. So um, with the start leave, um, you can use the date picker, or you can go in and overwrite uh, the date that you want. So I'm going to choose, oh, let's say, August 28th. And I'm going to use a half day. And my work schedule is going to be 8 to noon on that day. So again, when I enter in my start leave date, it auto-populated my end leave date with the same date. And then we're set up to do half day increments So uh, for this district. So right now, it defaulted to a half day, which is correct. That's all that I need. So obviously, if I needed to increase that or decrease or increase that, I could by clicking on the plus. And then if I wanted to correct that, maybe I increased it too much. I can go back and I can use the minus. So at this point then, um, my next thing is I have um, a field here where I can enter in the phone number. Um, again, if you enter that in your user profile, it'll auto-populate phone number from your user profile in here. This is optional, it isn't required as well as comments. And if you could ignore the substitute information as well, if subs aren't being um, entered in here in ESS. So you'll also notice now down at the bottom too, it will include uh, my supervisor's name and their email address. And I also have the ability to upload um, a file if needed. So um, if that's required for your district to uh, include an attachment, you can use the upload file to enter that in. So once I am finished filling out my leave request, I am going to click on create leave request. And what's going to happen is I'm going to get a green box up at the top saying that the operation was successful and that the leave request was created. So, and then basically your screen now is then set to create a new leave request. Now, um, I want to note something. If um, you want to enter in a leave request that includes a multiple day range. So let's pick on, let's say, September, oh, let's say, 6th, oh, say the 2nd or the 3rd through the 5th. Um, and so I'm going to put in my start and ending times here, 8 to 4, and I'm going to be using uh, full days. So I'm going to make sure it's three days that I want off, the 3rd, 4th, and the 5th. And when I do this and I click on Create Leave Request, it's not going to submit it right away. Instead, what's going to happen, let me select this leave type here. And I'm going to go ahead and click Create Leave Request. It is going to take me to this Leave Request Details area. And so basically, it's just ensuring here that uh, what I entered in as my total length, three days, is what is matches the actual days that I Included for my leave request. So um, I selected the third, fourth, and fifth. So one, two, three, that matches three here. I don't need to make any uh, changes. So once I click on accept, it will then go ahead and approve and submit my, or it'll go ahead and submit my leave request. So when you want to view, any request that you submitted, you can click on your My 
leave request view. And at this point then, it will display a grid of those leave requests and what the current status is regarding my approval workflow. And so um, just a couple of things to make note here is um, once a leave request is initiated, um, meaning submitted, it'll go through the process until um, everyone approves that workflow. And at that time then, it'll be updated to a, uh, an approved status. So once an approved leave request is exported in order to get posted into USPS, it'll change the status from approved to exported. So you may edit your leave request as long as the requ leave request is initiated. So you can see here, that this option is available for me to go ahead and edit this if I need to. If this was an approved status, I would no longer be able to edit the leave request. Instead, I would have to use the cancel option to cancel the leave request. When viewing a leave request, and we'll go ahead and pick on this one here, you're going to see three options, uh, view options up at the top. The leave request detail includes the information that was originally entered on the leave request, or you know if it was updated as well, it's going to show that information. The leave request daily details is the leave request detail window we kind of saw earlier, displaying the days of the week and the amount of each day that the leave request was for. So here are my two days here, one, two for my leave request. And then the leave request approval trail, that is going to show me, it tracks the activity on the leave request from the original requester to the final approver. So, and what's nice too is you'll notice the note displays the name of the workflow approval, or if we call it the group chain, that your leave request is part of. So this and this one, it's under the cafeteria workflow. So obviously, once it gets approved, um, more information will be added here. It'll show who approved it. If it was canceled for some reason or edited and it needs to restart the workflow process, all of that information is tracked under this leave request approval trail. The My Leave Calendar will allow you to view your leave request via a selected calendar view. So by default, it will show the monthly calendar view, but you can change your view to whatever works best for you. You can also filter options um, underneath here. I can filter by position, or I can filter by a leave type like sick leave, and it will just show those specific uh, leave requests in my calendar. So again, if I advance over to where I actually have some leave, here is the leave that I created. I created one for August 28th, shows here. And I also created some leave here um, at the beginning of September. You will also notice too, when you're in the leave calendar for convenience, we have also added the ability to create a new leave request from your calendar as well. And the last thing I want to show you is um, if you don't have the ESS user manual already bookmarked, you can view it um, and access it uh, via the documentation option here. So when I click on this, it'll take you to our user manual in case you need to go in there to get more information about a certain option. This concludes our demo of the standard user access in ESS.